All right, it's it's always fun being the economist because now people kind of know like oh the economy okay I think I know what that is now, especially when it goes bad. Um, but it it's it's really fun being the economist because nobody's ever quite sure what you do, and. <laughs> When it comes to wonderful events like this, people always expect me to talk about money and finance and accounting and, and all those economic things. When re the reality is economics is, is much larger than that. And so fortunately, when Bruce said that he would cover the money side of things, I was like, oh, good, because then I really get to talk about what I truly love and where I came from, which was social responsibility. Um, as David briefly mentioned, I've worked overseas a lot. I have a background in being an aid worker, and so I have this big thing about being a human. And I have this big thing about being a human gives us a certain sense of responsibility. And so any time I get an opportunity to talk about social responsibility, I absolutely love to do so. Um, a couple of things that Sarah mentioned um, is she talked about the things that we need to become more sustainable. Disincentives, incentives, education, and social responsibility. We have to have the social responsibility component of sustainability in order for it to happen. Last week at the Green Champions meeting, which let me just tell you how cool the Green Champions are. Um, you know, <laughs> you know the really, really, really awesome stuff has happened in one year. Um, you know, I stood up there in front of the Green Champions and I said, going green is great, but that's only one component of, of, of sustainability. Please come to this evening tonight, um, to the meeting tonight, and, and, and hear about the other components, like the financial component and like the social component. Um, you know, it, Sarah mentioned she was concerned with the apathy, and I'm very, very concerned with the apathy that I see in my culture and society, which I'll be honest is mainly why I came back to my hometown in the United States. Albeit I was doing a lot of wonderful things overseas, I was like, you know what, dang it. I felt more of a responsibility to come back to my own society and culture and have an impact here. Um, the neat, neat thing about sustainability I have learned in the very short time that I've been involved really at a local level is the web. All of these connections and interconnections, you start seeing the same people <laughs> over and over again. And it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful what you learn from the people around you. And I really want to give kudos to my teachers, <laughs> not my teachers, the group of teachers that I've been working with through First Coast Scholars. And there's 22 teachers that have been involved. Almost everybody's here tonight. Um, 11 teachers from Duval County and 11 teachers from Clay County. And we've been sitting in a classroom for the fourth, past four months and just talking about and thinking about, and hopefully I would not always talk the whole time, sustainability and what that meant. And I'll tell you what, I have learned so much from them, mainly because as a university professor, yes, I, I have contact with hundreds of people, but they're 18-year-olds. I don't have a lot of contact with 5-year-olds and 10-year-olds and 15-year-olds. And I learned so many things from the web that I was able to participate in over the past four months where we talked about sustainability. And I'll tell you what, to make a long story short, I was <laughs> on a conference call today with a couple of Florida senators, and I was kind of trying not to jump up and down. I was like, do you, and they know I've got these 22 teachers. And I said, do you know what my teachers told me? Do you know what I learned from them? Is that the kids are asking, why don't the adults care? The kids are asking, why don't we care? And I'll tell you what, that was a complete conversation stopper with the senators. And I, and I told the senators, I'm like, I, I really think that we need to listen a little bit more to what the children are telling us. Because honestly, when we're trying to do sustainability planning for 20 years, 50 years, 100 years out, who are we doing this planning for and who should we be listening to? And that's the wonderful role that a lot of you has is, have as teachers, is that connection with the generation that we are doing this for. So, all right. Social responsibility. One of the cool things, by the way, about being a part of the web, the kind of sustainability web that's going on here locally, is you get to steal stuff from other people. Um, and I had to laugh because Bruce had a slide up that he said he stole from me. And I looked at it and I started laughing and looked at Sarah because I'd stolen half of it from her. Um, and I'm like, okay, we're just using all the same stuff. So I was walking, I was over at the IFAS table and I, I have to laugh because I used to be an IFAS person and I stole some of the stuff he had. 
and I'm going to steal it. Um, and this comes from two of my former coworkers. I'm telling you, once you start getting involved with the web, it becomes really strong, really fast. It's pretty amazing. This is from Ifus. It's, he's got more copies of this. Imagine a community where the air and water are clean, water supplies fully meet demand, and everyone enjoys access to locally supplied, safe, and healthy foods. Wildlife flourishes, and the landscape is pleasing to the eye. Within this community, full participation and a spirit of cooperation pervade decision-making. People have an impact over their community's future. The community revitalizes the city center, reduces sprawl, and promotes regional identity and pride. Public transportation effectively reduces congestion and pollution from cars, reduces transportation costs, and improves access to jobs and services. The community has established a living wage standard for all employees. A strong emphasis on education and training for all promotes an improved quality of life today and fosters future, opportun fosters future opportunities for the community's youth. Okay, the only way that's gonna happen is through this, is social responsibility. So I wanna do a very brief presentation on what social responsibility is. And this, mind you, this is coming from The Economist. Okay, this is, this, this is the diagram, a Venn diagram, that you see most often associated with sustainability. There is the environmental component. There is an economic component, and there is a social component. And what our problem has been to, to date, and is right now, in my opinion, is that the economic component has not considered the social component, the social component has not considered the environmental component, and so on and so forth. We talk about sustainable economics or economic sustainability going, well, you shouldn't spend more than you earn. But even more important than talking about economic sustainability is what I've kind of gotten to know as sustainability economics. What impact does the economy have on the environment? And in Florida, for example, what impact might the environment have on the economy? Oh, hurricanes, oil spills. Um, and what impact does the economy have on our society, unemployment, disparity, poverty? And what impact does society have on the economy? So sustainability is all three of these different areas being considered all at the same time. So social responsibility, as I was writing this PowerPoint this afternoon, I sat there and just, I just decided to wing it. Social responsibility is seeing your role in and your responsibility to your community and your environment. And there's a lot of different levels at which that takes place. My, my environment, my community is myself, my body, myself. And we forget about that a lot. We forget to take care of ourselves. We forget to eat right and exercise and sleep enough. The whole sleep thing is pretty important. We forget to not to kind of balance our plates, not get too stressed out. We really do forget about ourselves, and it's extremely important that we be responsible to ourselves. Our family, whether they be close or far, our neighborhood that we live in, our regional community. I'm very lucky. I'm a, I'm a member of an extremely wonderful little community called Atlantic Beach, but that doesn't mean that I have just as much responsibility to people in Springfield or in Eastside in Jacksonville. Those, those people who live in different parts of, of Jacksonville still live in my community, and I still live in theirs. National, I am a US citizen, and I have a responsibility to that community and to that society. International, hi, I'm a human. I'm a member of humanity, and I have a big responsibility to the other 6.8 billion people who are also members of humanity. And um, I also live on planet Earth. And I have a responsibility to that. I have a responsibility to the environment and to planet Earth. And being a bit redundant here, but each one of those memberships, I belong to myself, I've got this body, <laughs> um, my family, I have responsibility towards them even though they drive me bonkers some days. Uh, my community, be it very, very local or, or Jacksonville, um, I have a responsibility to my country, um, to the rest of humanity, 6.8 billion of us, and to the planet that gives me the conditions that allow me to live here. Um, 
one of the one of my, my favorite ways to think about all of this at the same time is food. And as David mentioned, I am getting a PhD in food and resource economics. So I think a lot about agriculture and food. And food and agriculture is a great way to look at all of these different levels of responsibility. Food, nutrition, myself, healthy food, food not full of chemicals, the right amount of food. Getting those cookies in too is important. You know, it's 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 about balance and it's about being healthy food in a, in a local level. Working in your community garden is a fantastic way to meet both the self-responsibility when it comes to food and to meeting your neighbors and to getting some wonderful things done, especially if you're in a community where income is a problem or expenditures are a problem. This is a fantastic way to integrate um, responsibility on a financial level, on a nutritional level, and on a community level. Regional community. If you have more than you need, then donate what you grow in your community garden or in your home garden to, um, to a community kitchen or to a food shelter or to a homeless shelter. National. There's a lot of um, people in the United States who are going hungry. There's also tens of billions of dollars of your tax money that's going into the food structure. Something that if you feel responsible that you could learn more about and you could vote on. International, a lot of hungry people out there learning more about food at an international level and perhaps getting involved. Think Haiti, think situations like that. Planet Earth, use your food to be good to planet Earth. Food's great, it absorbs carbon dioxide, it can, you, you can grow it organically, you can compost in the process, so there's so many things that, like Sarah sa said, you can go from less bad to, to zero to actually giving back to the Earth by, by getting involved with food. So it's just one example of one thing that you can do to be responsible on all of these different levels. And gardens, by the way, are the coolest things to do with kids ever. All right, so how to be more socially responsible. It's really, really, in my view, not complicated. You participate, you attend, you volunteer, you teach, you mentor, you donate, you coordinate, you vote and many more things. I started teaching sustainability at a university level one year ago. And uh, I came up with this kind of off the cuff exercise for my students that I did myself and I found, I found it to be one of the, the, the most life changing things I've kind of done over the past year. I challenged my students to write five things that they currently do that are socially responsible. And I asked them to write 10 things that they could do that were socially responsible. And they had the hardest time doing this because my students didn't understand what social responsibility was because they didn't see their family as their responsibility. They didn't see their community as responsibility. They didn't see Jacksonville as their responsibility. They didn't see the responsibility of being a citizen of a country. Whatever country that may be, it doesn't really matter. You have a responsibility at so many different levels. My students had never really thought about all of these different levels of responsibility. They, they really, they're 18, they certainly don't think about their responsibility to themselves. But it was so much fun trying to like, just sit there and brainstorm with them to get them to come up with five things that they do. Five things, it sounds so easy and it really isn't. Five things that you do that are socially responsible. So these were some of the five I think that, first off, if you're a teacher, you got one down. If you teach, there you go. Okay, you're socially responsible. Um, I donate, not a whole lot, but you know, what I can for sure. I donate as much as I can. I volunteer. Um, I attend events. All of you this evening are being socially responsible. You didn't have to be here. You've been teaching all day. We probably didn't get enough sleep this week. It's getting towards the end of the school year. You did not have to come tonight. But in my opinion, simply coming here and participating is a part of being socially responsible and vote. Voting is a fantastic way, and absolutely locally, state level, nationally, it's a fantastic way to be socially responsible. 10 things that, um, some of these I do, but some of them I don't. 10 things you could do. Give blood. Um, I'm a passer outer, so I don't do this as much as I should. Volunteer, and I actually scratched on my notes here. I meant to say mentor, because one thing I have learned from working with school teachers is how critically important 
mentoring becomes in a lot of situations. So I kind of, I forgot to change that to mentor, but I could, I don't mentor and I could. Buy local. This is, and I'm a local business owner. This is so important. This is so important. This is so important. And Sarah said this too, become a locavore. I mean, try it for a week. Try to go one week buying everything from local. It's really hard and it's really wonderful what you'll discover is available out there. Um, I'm a big advocate for farmer's markets. I think they're fantastic. We have one at the beach that's just way too much fun. It's, it, I don't even go to buy stuff anymore. It's just a big social event. And it's so neat to see the people, to get to know the people who also attend. They're all my neighbors, the local farmer's market. Um, this is the voice of my mother and grandmother speaking on number five here. Uh, yeah, write more thank you cards. Because nobody does this anymore, and how wonderful it is to get one. There you go. <laughs> With soy printed inks. They've got them out there. Office Depot's got some fantastic 100% recycled soy, soy ink done uh, thank you cards. I actually got one the other day that, that had a perforated middle, where you would, and it turned into a second card. So cool. One of my students sent it to me. I was very happy about that. Attend a city council meeting. Not enough of us do that. Um, one of my neighbors the other night held, I thought this was so neat, a meet and greet for one of the um, school board, um, maybe future members. Buy fair trade. Work in a community garden. And yes, I know I have a number 10 there. Throw a party. One of the things I do every year, and my students always laugh at this one because they're like, oh, you're kidding. I'm like, no, really, I'm not. One of the things I do every year that I'm most proud of is every summer I throw a very, very, very large party and I send out hundreds of invitations and I buy ridiculous amounts of beer. And the one caveat for attending the party is you have to bring a donation. And every year I pick a different local organization to support and you should see the stuff that rolls in. It absolutely blows me away every year. So it's an excuse. I go up and down the street and I invite all my neighbors, all the ones I do like and all the ones I don't like and all the weird ones. I just they all, they all get invited, and it is so cool, and I'll tell you what I am, what I have received from my neighborhood has been so much larger, larger than what I've given. So every year, it's, it's an excuse. It's an absolute excuse to throw a wonderful party. So that's, um, that's what I'd like to, you know, to leave you guys with, is thinking about what is your role in the community? How can you be more socially responsible? But also, especially because you are teachers, how can we help our students to better see their role in the community because once they see it i truly believe that they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna feel that responsibility like we all do but right now there's a disconnect and so it's our responsibility not only to be so more socially responsible but also to create it amongst other people so thank you for attending especially to my 22 teachers <laughs> <laughs>